Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, star maker for entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential, command any stage, and make blockbuster profits. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, and welcome to this episode of Thrive, the art of list building with my guest, Suzanne Moore. Suzanne Moore is a marketing and list building expert who teaches entrepreneurs the best strategies to grow their lists quickly. On this episode, Suzanne talks to us about what's working right now in list building. She talks to us about what we should do with our irresistible free offers so that people will actually open them and come back to buy after reading or absorbing the information that we've given them. And she finally gives us her top three to five things that all entrepreneurs should be doing consistently to grow their list by leaps and bounds. Suzanne is a wealth of information. I hope you enjoy the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, and welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You are in for high-value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. And I'm thrilled to have my special guest here with me today, Suzanne Tregenza moore Suzanne helps coaches and consultants create success in their business they previously only dreamed of by teaching them how to effectively build an email marketing list, both on and offline. Her no-nonsense, straight talk, clear, concise direction, and technical know-how provide the support her clients need and want to get out of their own way and take the necessary actions that get them clients. Suzanne has an MBA in marketing and entrepreneurship, is a member of the Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, Good Life team, and is regularly featured as an expert on New York's WOR radio station. Welcome, Suzanne. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Heather. Thank you for inviting me and and working this out. I'm, I'm super excited. As I said, before you started recording, this is my first blab, and I'm already liking the platform. Yeah, it's awesome. It integrates with Twitter and you you know you can promote before and after. It's awesome. I love it yeah. as well. And I love that you are here because we're going to be talking about something that is a hot hot topic and that is list building. So, my first question to you, Suzanne, does size really matter? Well, you know what? I think the most important thing to always remember is that quality comes first right? There is no use having a 30,000 person list if you're not engaged with them, if they don't care about what you're selling, if they aren't, um, if they aren't, if they don't connect with you in a special way, right? So I think that people can do very well with small lists if they, if those followers are really connected to them and if they're really engaged with whatever it is you offer. But of course, it's always better to continue to grow it. And I actually, I think that brings up one other point, which is, you know what? Um, I think one of the, the important things is to always be doing things that are building your list, right? So it's not like list nirvana is I've got 5,000 people on my list or 10,000 people or 50,000 people. And therefore, like I'm done building my list. It's about a consistent um, energy of, of getting out there and doing things that do build your list because really that it's that energy and bringing that energy to it that attracts people to you and that um, keeps a flow of people who are like who you are top of mind awareness for. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you're talking about, about continuing to nurture your list because um, you evolve as a brand, right? You're not the same brand as you were a year ago or as a business. You're evolving. Your your insights are evolving. Your business is changing. And someone may have come onto your list at a point where you were in your brand that you are absolutely. no longer. Yes. And that's true. I mean, so, I think that's true for really almost any entrepreneur, right? I mean, we we learn things. We then want to teach them to people as we grow, our business grows, as we grow as individuals, our business grows and expands and shifts. And, and there are things that in order to keep your business growing, you need to let go of. 
There are things that you're always trying to integrate as you learn new things. You know, you want to integrate them into your business so that you can share them with the people you serve. Um, and that's, mm -hmm. I think, true of of really almost any type of entrepreneur, right? Especially one that's in content marketing or that's coaching or consulting. Because you want to you want to integrate that top of not top of mind awareness, but the new things that you're learning about serving your people, you want to integrate sharing with your people. Great. I love what you're saying. And you said something about letting go, which I want to ask you yeah. about. And that is, what, what are your thoughts about letting go of people on your list, of, of pruning yeah. your list? So um, I think that I think that there's some natural attrition, right? I think that you know, either course. people change their email address or they um, they say, you know what, she uh, she's just not hitting the mark for me anymore. And that's fine because you don't want people on your list who aren't engaged. And I do know, I know that some of the big email list providers will actually encourage you to look at your list and say, you know what, these people haven't open an email for me in X number of months, and therefore we should shed them. Um, I, yeah, what are your thoughts about that? Because I've heard that it increases, you know, your your click-through rate, or I'm not your click-through rate, but it increases how often your emails are open. Well, so there's... Or your rate. There's some score I'm that sure it, 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 it I'm increases. sure it does. I will tell you, I don't get that technical, right? Most of the people that I work with, I'm just trying to get them to do their first teleclass or try to be on their first, you know, podcast or blab, right? Um, which is one of the reasons I'm thrilled to be on here because I've certainly had my own podcast. I've done lots of interviews, but this is the first time I've done a live uh, interview like this. And you know, it's the way things are moving. You got to keep going. You got to try these new things. And um, so in terms of, you know, the technicalities of that, I'm sure there are reasons for it. I'm sure that someone who's a massive Infusionsoft expert would come on here and tell you, absolutely, you've got to, you know, get rid of your, um, get rid of your dead weight, right? Um, mm -hmm. I have some dead weight I'd like to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I'm sitting on it right now. Uh, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> I have, I certainly don't take issue with it. Right. Um, and, but I will tell you, most of the people that I serve are just trying to get those first few thousand people on their email marketing list. And so, you know, I think it becomes a scary prospect to them to talk about paring it down. Right. And I don't think they're probably right. in a position where they really need to do that. But certainly, right. um, you always want to be looking at the percentages of people that are opening the things that you are sending. And if those percentages are dropping, I think it's an indication. It may be an indication of the fact that you're shifting. And if that's what it is, yes. that's okay, right? Because mm -hmm. you're shifting mm -hmm. into whatever the message is that you're going to. However, mm -hmm. if you haven't shifted your message and people just aren't opening your emails, that's a different story. And I think... For me, that's more of what I have uh, clients looking at than, you know, oh, you've got 50,000 people on your list and we need to shed that bottom 10, right? Because that's the sure, in, sure. in terms of who I serve. Yeah. 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 So talk to us. Who do you serve and why do you serve them? So I, 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 I've worked with a couple of men along my entrepreneurial journey, but I would say like 95% of the people I've worked with have been women. Um, they're typically one person businesses. Um, they might also have a, a virtual assistant. Um, occasionally I've had a client who has full-time employees, but not generally. And I think most importantly, they're, you know, coaches and consultants. Uh, they are there are people who are trying to make a difference in the world and really care about not just the fact that they want to make money, although that's important because we all need to do that in order to keep going forward and doing what we do. But um, they look at the business that they are in as a way to serve people and to, um, to really help change the world. And, you know, a lot of them are health coaches or they're life coaches or they're business coaches that help life coaches and business coaches. And so that's really the, the audience that I connect with the best. Um, mm -hmm. 
and I and I think that's true because you know, as my um, my podcast, Advancing Entrepreneur, has focused on not just oh you have a business and you're constantly moving forward, but what's the mission behind your business? Because as business people, as as entrepreneurs, it gets really hard. I don't care. Mm -hmm. You might have really great periods of time, but there are also periods of time that are extremely difficult. And I find, and I believe that the people who really stick with their business and keep going and grinding it out are the ones that have a mission behind what they're doing. Because on those really rough days, they can say, you know what? I'm just out here. I'm trying to teach moms how to eat well or how to take care of themselves better or I'm trying to teach, you know, single moms that they can have the life that they want, or I'm trying to teach, you know, people how to market their businesses so that they can get in front of people so that they can continue to serve the world. And so my clients are all people that are, are doing that and who have yeah, deep missions behind what they're doing. Yeah, and it's so important to have a, a clarity around your mission as well. And you talked about the open rate and and connecting and engaging your audience. And I think that that's something that I notice with people, even more advanced people who want to go to the next level, is they're not, sometimes it's because they're evolving, yeah. but they're not always deeply, deeply connected to that sense of mission. They have a vague sense of what that right. mission is. They know they want to help people. They might be a health coach or a business coach, but they don't have that bigger sense of mission. And I think sometimes that's what gets in the way of that next big phase of your business because the bigger your internal mission is, this is my belief, the bigger your internal mission is and the clarity around it, the bigger your business can be. But it all starts with that mission because that's that's how you feed your emails. Those are your headlines. Those are the things that you say on social media to really engage right. people. And people can sense right. that. And you know what? People think of email marketing, you know, no email marketing list building. It sounds like it's really techie stuff, right? And there are a lot of people mm -hmm. out there who make it all about the techie, right? It's like SEOs and this and that and Google Analytics. And, you know, and I'm not saying any of that stuff isn't important at a certain point in your business to keep moving forward. But the bottom line is, is it's about connection. Amen. Woo woo. I'm going to give you some, um, I'm, a, I'm applauding. <laughs> okay. That's what I do. <laughs> um, uh, it's about connection, right? It's about, um, it's about whether you're getting on Facebook to talk to people, whether you're doing a blab, whether you're jumping on Facebook live from your minivan in the morning. Um, it's about connecting with people and sharing a message that is, is important to them and meaningful to them and that they care about and that they want to learn more about. Oh, yes, absolutely. So let's talk about this yeah. a little bit. So say you, say you do, say you do have your mission, you're emailing your list, you're being a good doobie and you're doing these things, you're getting more visible, but people still aren't signing on. Where, where is the disconnect there? Um, it could be in the offer. Um, mm -hmm. oftentimes, um, so a couple things, right? You have to have an offer to provide to people. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to have different offers at different levels, frankly, because there are some people that would sign on for a you know year long coaching program for thousands of dollars, um, and there are some people that just aren't at that point in their evolution for whatever it is that you're offering, right? And well, it also, but it also, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it it's not necessarily even just the point of evolution. People just like to get a taste. So you might be you might be someone who's ready to to put down a couple thousand yeah. dollars a month for a coaching program, but you're not going to do that without. You know, you might want to buy the book. Right. First, you might want to buy the book know. first. You might want to, um, you might want to have a, a single session with someone to understand what it's like to work with them before you plunk down mm -hmm. um, thousands of dollars. So, um, so the offer is important, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things, I mean, I always recommend to people having a free gift um, so that they. Mm -hmm. So what's what's hot now? I mean, everybody talks about the IF. Well, you asked me specifically about you know, where's the disconnect if they are coming to you and they're reading your stuff and, um, and they're just not buying. And I think mm -hmm. that for what a lot of people experience is they focus their, you know, even their offer is about, um, is about the, uh, system, 
that they're going to teach someone mm. instead of the benefit that someone will get by going through that system. And so I think it's really important that people um, focus on the language that they're using to present the offers they present and, um, and make sure that that language is about benefits and all the things that people will, that their target market will experience once they sign on for whatever it is you're offering. Because people, you know, as one of my mentors says, systems are not sexy. <laughs> I don't know. I think systems are pretty sexy well, myself. But are even I, more I, sexy, right? Yes, yes, that's true. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, being told that if you do these 10 steps, you will experience yes. X, Y, Z, you know, A, B, C. I should have started mm -hmm. with A. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so I think it has a lot to do with the language of the offer as well. So then you were going to ask me about IFO. So what would you like to ask me about free gifts or IFO? Well, I was, well I'm sorry to interrupt. So I went back to, I was like, people, I always say people buy the promise, the process, right? They're buying the promise of what you can do, not the process of how you Correct. do it. Yes. That's right. right. So, yes. Yeah, so IFO, irresistible free yeah. offer. We all know that we need free those. Gifts. And you, and I love what you said. You know, any, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Talk to us a little bit about that whole, you know, burrito of the IFO, because there are lots of different schools of thought about how much value you should give. Some people say give everything in the free gift because then, you know, you're, be you're being a value showing a value. Some people say, you know, just give a slice. So that's one question. The other question is what is hot right now? What is hot right now for IFOs? So, um, okay. So in terms of value, I believe that um, so a lot of it has to do, again, with the title of your IFO and that it's benefits focused. Very important. Mm -hmm. That is critical. Um, but I believe that any IFO that someone downloads, they should be, if they follow what it is you recommend in there, they should be able to see direct benefit from what you've shared with them. And mm -hmm. it can be one benefit. It can be three benefits. It can be three points of 10 that are all part of a larger solution. Mm -hmm. But um, the point of the IFO is to get people to come back, to give them enough information that they say, wow, this chick really knows what she's talking about. I want to learn more from her. And whether that's they open your email every week or you're, you know, you're easing whenever you send it or whether it is... Um, whether it is uh, that they, you know, sign on for a consultation with you or a VIP day or your big program. The point is, is that they, they need to get enough benefit from that one thing that they go, yep, she knows what she's talking about. And I've seen it directly impact me when I've taken action on what she sent me. So mm -hmm. I think that's different for every yeah. business. Yeah, and I like what you said. It's not just, you said it right at the, the very end there, which made me think of it. It's not just a benefit that you can see the result six months from now, because that's not the point. The point is, call me back tomorrow. Like, I've implemented this step right, right now. Right. Like, you know, health coach, one of the basic things they can tell people to do, drink more water. And I know it's like cliche and everything else, but you know what? We all know that when we actually do take three days and drink more water, we feel better. <laughs> Right. You know, right. I mean, it's just like, it's like, duh. You know? um, and that's the other thing, right? It doesn't, what you share doesn't have to be rocket science. It doesn't have to mm -hmm. be the newest, strangest, most different thing ever. But it does mm -hmm. have to be clarifying for the person who receives it. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think people think about, oh, my IFO. Oh, it's I'm giving too much away. I, 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 I. This is my system. My this to... It's about the benefit to the person who receives it. When they open right. it, when they take action, what is something that you can help them with that will help them and make them come back? Hi, walk? everyone. I hope you're enjoying the show. There's still more great content to come, but I wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about a new course I've created called Close Any Room. 
You may have noticed that all of my guests know how to speak about their businesses in a clear and compelling way. But that's something a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. And it's something you need to know how to do so you can convert your audience into more sales. And that's why I've created this course. It's a six week audio course to teach you how to craft a signature talk so that you can authentically give value and close more of your audience from the stage. In the class, you learn how to create a clear and compelling point of view, how to organize your content and give great value to your audience without giving away the farm, how to structure your talk so that it seamlessly closes your audience at the end without feeling salesy. And I also give you templates and instructions how to create marketing materials, a speaker sheet, and all kinds of sign-up sheets when you're giving your talks. And finally, what everybody's hot to know, I also give you tips and resources on how to find speaking gigs. It's an all-inclusive course so that you can start closing and selling more from the stage. And as my free gift to you for tuning into the podcast, I'm giving you my free webinar, also called Close Any Room, and you can listen to it at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. And it will give you lots of tips and information to get you started on how to create that signature talk that sells. Okay, we're gonna get back to the show now. There's still more great content to come. Thanks for joining me. And the other thing is, and I often talk about this, is no one is going to lose 50 pounds from an eye, from an, a free offer. No. You're I not. Know. That is not going to happen. work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. But people, I think you get worried that if you give away too much that people are going to be like, oh, now they have no reason to come back. I mean, how many, how many products do people buy that sit on their shelves? You know, that, that, the ab master or whatever it is, you know, that. You're not, you're not going to, you're not, you don't have to worry about it. If you show that you give value and that you have, and also talk about your value and that show that this is a piece. Yeah. And if you want to take the next step. And so there has to also be a strong call to action in your IFO. So talk about I that. also want to share, I mean, with, with a mentor that I have followed for years, right? I have bought mm -hmm. $300 program. I, you know, I've gotten free stuff that told me mm -hmm. her whole system. I've gotten, I've bought $300 programs. I wanted more. I've gone to live events that taught what the $300 program was, but I wanted more. Mm -hmm. I've been to those live events. I've bought into other things and masterminds and this and that. And you know what? I, I keep buying more. Why? Mm -hmm. Because every time I do what she offers or do what she tells me to do, it, it does good things for my business and my life. Right. right. And so mm -hmm. it's like that simple. So I, right. it's really about provide something that is beneficial to them. And, um, that if they take action on, they will see very quick results because then they'll come back for more. So you had asked me then about what's the hottest thing in Right. Mm -hmm. the, what are the trends, right? Because we have all these new platforms. We, you know, design is a really big piece of things now yep. too. So what, what is trending well, right so, now? What are people responding to? So this to? first always goes back to your target market, right? It always goes back to what, how they like to consume things, what they like, what they really want, what their, what their big, greatest needs are, what their greatest concerns are. So that's number one. But my personal opinion is um, things that are short and sweet, right? Checklists, mm -hmm. uh, one pagers. Um, I mean, even if it's an ebook, right? Keep it short. Because people don't sit down and read a 150 page book that they downloaded from, you know, your website. They, they might mm -hmm. buy a 150 page book and read the whole thing. They might, right. um, although most of the times they don't, if it's like advice, right? <laughs> like it's usually they pick and choose pieces. Um, I know that's what I do. Um, but, but you know what? That's a really good point. I just want to add this in there is leave white space in terms of design, leave white yeah. space because that helps people focus on the points that you're actually Absolutely. trying to make. Yeah. You don't want, mm -hmm. you don't, whether it is in actuality dense or whether it is um, figuratively dense. You don't want mm -hmm. it to be either one. You want it to be right. 
um, something that is easily consumable and that people can quickly take action on. Overwhelm, right. forget about it. You know, if Forget about it. Forget, Forget about, about it. it. If people download mm -hmm. whatever it is you're offering, and it could be like the holy grail, but if it's mm -hmm. if it puts them into overwhelm, forget it because they're not coming back for more because they just got it's like oh she's it's too much it's too much she's I can't follow it right um yep. so my strongest recommendation for that is keep it simple. Keep it simple. And um, and to me, that's like checklist, you know, five, five tips. I love a top 10 list. You know, I just think that is the cat's meow for those of us. So what, what about um, form? Like I, is, I know video is huge. You know, everybody's so visible. Right. What do you say to people who, you know, especially people who are more advanced, you know, when you're just starting out, you might do a PDF, but if you're yeah. moving along and you really want to get, you know, more attention video, whatever platform, whether it's Blab or YouTube. So what are your thoughts about so, that? So um, I have to say, I think that, I think that, Either keep it super simple, like a PDF, even when you're more advanced, the PDF can get more advanced. It, you can get your graphic designer to do it instead of doing it yourself. You can, you know, have it be a, a 10 page PDF with more white space or, you know, put more beautiful graphics in it or whatever. But I think that people download those more quickly and easily and actually read them and take action. Whereas, you know, I know people who've done like seven part video series, you get a different one every day. I think it's too much. The mm. other thing I would say is when you get that to that more advanced level, I would rather see you doing more teleseminars and more webinars than mm. coming up with more complex lead magnets. I mean, in itself, a teleseminar or webinar is a lead magnet. But when we say lead magnets, right. we generally think of like, you know, kind of a one hit wonder type of, you know, you put your name and email address in, you get it immediately and, you know, whatever it is you can consume and act on quickly. So do you have like a top three to five list of what people should be doing for list building? Like, should it be, you know, their, their website, you know, above the fold? So what is your top three to five Absolutely. list? So um, first and foremost, I, now I know that you are a Brandon gal right? You are a lot about brand. Mm -hmm. However, I will say that I think a lot of people when they first start out in business, especially when they're brand new, I think they spend too much on branding initially when they may not really be so clear about what they're doing. And that goes back to the shifting and changing and growing as an entrepreneur. Um, so yeah. especially if people are really early on in their business, I like to see them put up mm -hmm kind of a one page splash page um, website. Keep it simple. Don't, I know people who've spent like $2,000 on a website and then six months later are like, it really doesn't work for my brand anymore. Right? Yeah. And I think the point is for me, I mean, the, the basis for what I do is all about message. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, it's all, I mean, it's the message and the image, but if you don't have the message, it doesn't matter what you put right. out there. And part of having a clear message, you know, whether you're beginning or not, whether you're further along is tweaking. And I think that's where people get stuck in their brands, in their message, in their business building is they do something and they think this is, this is it. Right. I, the rest of my life, the rest of my business, the rest of my brand is going to be based on this PDF. Oh my God. Right. And it's nobody, not, you put it out there and if nobody downloads it, then you know, you have, you know, a lemon and then you tweak exactly. it and you do the next thing you just keep yourself in motion so i always say that your your brand is not a fixed point it's just you have a, an intention and it's it's a moving it's a line yeah. that is moving yes and you know what that's that's awesome so to me you know put up a splash page website to start out with because it'll feel a lot easier to move than if you spent you know two thousand dollars or whatever having a, a website built for you so what's a, what, for people who don't know, what's just a splash a one page, page website? Website, right? Um, just so, something that says, here I am, here's what I offer, um, here's my IFO that you can opt into, and here's how to contact me. Boom, done, right? Um, 
And uh, so that's number one. You've got to have some kind of landing landing place. Um, the second is you've got to have an IFO, a, a free gift, a lead magnet, whatever the case may be. I think that is critical. And I encourage people like, that's one of those things that I kind of say, I've done a lot of teleclasses where I've been like, I challenge you to have it up in one week because people get so mired down in it, you know, mm -hmm. and they get nervous about it. And, oh, and, and again, yes, having them so that they have professional graphics and are the most gloriously beautiful things in the world is fabulous. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. put up a top 10 list. Right. And there are so many tools out there right now to make to make design easy, yes. easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I, there's no excuse. Right. So I, so IFO, um, mm -hmm. I then always encourage people to do either a teleclass or webinar. Um, and that uh, to me, start out with teleclasses. Don't jump into webinars. They're scarier. You get seen, you know, um, I started, I did teleclasses for years before I moved on to a webinar mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they, they help you build your business. Not only do they help you build your list because people have to opt in to, to, to see what you're doing and hear your message, but you know what? They actually help build your credibility because if you're out there doing webinars or teleclasses, you actually have to promote them. And in promoting them, you're telling people, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Right. This is what I'm talking about. This is my message. Mm -hmm. And so that alone right. builds your credibility, right? Mm -hmm. And so, right. um, so I'm a huge believer in that you have to be doing teleclasses or webinars. Um, okay. Then I would say the next step uh, that I typically encourage people to do is interview swaps. And whether that's like this, you know, you're mm -hmm. interviewing me and I'm going to have you on my podcast um, or whether it's interview swaps for your list. Um, so, mm. I mean, you don't have to have a blab, you don't have to have a podcast, you don't have to have a platform. You can just have a teleconference line and interview someone else and have them interview you. And to me, yep. that is an excellent way of op get, opening yourself up to new lists and sh sharing that favor with someone else. And frankly, I've done very well with those because when somebody else introduces me to people that trust them, they immediately have a higher trust factor of me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would say those are kind of my three top hit list items. So, so one page yeah. website, uh, yeah, uh, an, irresist an irresistible yeah. free offer, um, uh, in uh, teleseminars absolutely. and webinars, yeah. swapping yeah. interviews. And I, and I think also you said this already in, in but I, I want to just clarify, but having people mail for you, it's not necessarily just yeah. the interview, but that whole JV thing of having people introduce yeah. maybe to their list. Hey, Suzanne is really great at list building. You should check out her new, whatever Absolutely. it is. So, although you know it, that gets a so, little sticky though, because a lot of people won't do that unless you have an affiliate marketing program. And then, you know, that's like this whole additional technical thing that people get stressed out about. And so absolutely. And, you know, if you can work it out to do that with people and not get into that bigger technical challenge. Um, yeah, but I think that even at the beginning, you know, and especially at the beginning when you're building and you're you're making your network of affiliates and JV partners, just people who are that, you know, it doesn't have to be a big technical thing. It can just be, would yeah. you please, you know, for you me? know what, that's it. Absolutely. And I've done that for many people. Um, and, um, mm -hmm. and I've had people do it for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree. I mean, it can, it can get more yeah. complicated, but, but when you have those affiliate programs, I mean, you are leveraging your time and it's a win-win for everybody. Absolutely. So yes. it, it's a more advanced strategy, but it is a, a great strategy right. as well. So, and, but speaking of offers, what, what is, how can people get in touch with you? How can, how do you specifically help people? Do you have something coming up or a program that you want to tell us about so that people can work with you and, and learn these strategies to grow Sure. Their list? Well, so I am, um, I'm actually developing a, I, I'm in the midst of a 60 day list building challenge with folks. Um, mm -hmm. I have a number of women in that and I'm, I'm, 
I am taking that and I'm actually going to expand it into a tribe building program. I'm not quite sure what it's called yet. Um, it's probably going to launch this spring, but it, it's going to be um, it's going to be a year long program where people will be able to connect with each other and will be able to get coaching directly from me. So that is upcoming. Um, I do want to offer anyone who's listening, if you want to, um, I recently put together a, a lead magnet myself. Um, I, I, yeah, I good, lead good. magnet myself to, um, that is all about list building and it's 40 ways to build your list authentically. And you can grab that at SuzanneTMoore.com forward slash gift forward slash 40 ways. Dot com forward slash Suzanne T. Moore dot com forward slash yep. gift forward slash is it four o yes forty ways forty ways okay I'm posting this in the chat you tell me if I got it right yeah absolutely yeah. awesome so that, yeah so That's that awesome. is um, another way to um, somebody says they want to know about the sixty day challenge so that is we're about halfway through and um, we are. Uh, I've, I've got an, a lovely num group of women in there. Um, so I'm not, it's not open for entry at this time, but I'm considering, Will you be I'm considering it. Um, I actually, I think that people may in, may appreciate and may be able to take better action from the year long program frankly, because I think that trying to do what I'm challenging them to do in 60 days, I mean, it is a challenge, right? And um, I, I think that, that I'm going to be focusing on the year long program, but I may open up a 30 day challenge um, to. Well, I think you've got, yeah. I think you might want to, you got to take her right there. You know, I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, but um yeah, awesome. so that's where that's where I'm, and I'm writing a book, by the way, on list building for coaches and and right. consultants. So, yeah, awesome. Sounds like you have a thank lot you. going on. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this expertise. If you if you liked what Suzanne said, give her a hand. Come on, give her some applause. Yeah, I do that. Do, I... do I? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, I always end the interviews because I think it's so important to have gratitude for everything. You know, we're, we're very, 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 very lucky to live in a society where we can be entrepreneurs, where we have freedom of speech, where we have freedom to explore our heart's desires and to discover our mission. There are so many people in the world who don't have that luxury. So I like to end my interviews always for with the question of what in this moment right now as we're sitting here right in this very instant what are you most grateful for Suzanne oh boy in this very instant what am I most grateful for I mm -hmm. um I'm most grateful for the fact that I I have a beautiful home and and that I don't worry about you know where my next meal is coming from or where, you know, I, I'm, I don't have concerns that so many people in this world have, you know, that I can just, I get up in the morning and I wake up in a warm bed and I, you know, feed my children and I'm not worried about how I'm going to feed them, but that I, I have that bounty around me, which so many of us That's take awesome. for granted, but I have to say, I mean, I, I had a recent move from New Jersey, suburban New Jersey to Vermont. It's been two years now. And the socioeconomic um, difference is huge. And I, I have learned so much about the incredible abundance I have in my life from it. So, um, so I think that's what I have to say, but I'm also grateful for you. Oh, thank you. I thank you. And I was going to say, I'm grateful for you for being here. And I want to acknowledge you for 
stepping up to serve and helping people. You know, a lot of people are are looking at the, you know, always wanting bigger, bigger, better, 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 higher, 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 and that you're really serving people who who need you and that are and without your kinds of services can't really even get to that place that you're talking about of feeling like I have a warm bed because they're mm-hmm. struggling and to have not financially struggling, but to, to grow their yeah. business, right? And to have you there to help them do that so that they can have abundance and that you can shepherd them from that that beginning place to a place of more financial freedom. And I think that's a very special um, calling. And I, I want to acknowledge you for, for filling that role and for doing it with love and with so much wisdom and expertise. So thank you for sharing that with, with me and with thank my audience. Thank you so much. That's really Thank yeah. You. Yeah. And my thank you always to my audience for being here is my free webinar, Close Any Room, How to Add Thousands of Dollars to Your Monthly Income with Signature Talks. And you can get that at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. So thank you so much for being here, everybody. And thank you, Suzanne, once again. Until next time, here's to hitting yeah. all your high notes. Well, take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Thrive. I loved having you here. I love having you as part of my community. And if you're enjoying the show, I would love it if you share it with your friends on Twitter, on Facebook, or wherever they're hanging out. I also want to let you know you can leave me feedback or comments. I love hearing from you. Just post those at heatherpodoska.com. You can also leave suggestions for topics that you'd like to know more about, or if there's someone you'd really like to see on the show, let me know that as well. Okay, until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care. Bye-bye.